uh, when teaching the Bible at a private school, uh, how do you handle uh, theological disagreements between you and the organization? <laughs> I get fired a lot. Um, well, listen, if you, if, you, if you signed up to teach at a particular uh, school with a particular theological uh, declaration or statement of faith, you probably signed a contract stating that you would not say anything in opposition to that or undermine their particular stance. More than likely did. Uh, if you did, then, <coughs> then you put yourself in a position of having to honor your word. Um, so if I were a teacher in a particular school and that school said that the baptism of the Holy Spirit occurs at salvation, and I don't believe that. I believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit occurs as a secondary experience. Um, it may happen when I get saved, and right after I get saved, I also get filled and baptized by the Spirit. Or it could happen a week, a month, a year, or years later, because it's a secondary experience to salvation. But I signed a statement saying that I will agree to not differ on this particular subject, and I'm a teacher, and that theological subject comes up then as a teacher, I am, one, not going to undermine. I'm not going to come in opposition. I'm not going to be teaching, we'll say, a theology class and say, well, you know, some believe this, but this is what the Bible really says. But as an instructor, I do have the freedom to be able to give various ways that this particular portion of Scripture has is, is been interpreted in a theologically orthodox manner, and I can present those things and say there's a variety of ways to look at this, this school, believes this, these people believe this, these people believe this, these, and I don't want to prefer one over the other, but I can give a full account of the theological thing, and I say you can, you know, consider the implications of each one, because that's what real education is anyway, is giving to people opportunities to see a variety of views over one thing, and then to come to a settled conviction as to what they believe that is, what is the truth concerning that. So I believe that you can you can remain in the guidelines of the theological stance of the school while presenting sides of the argument in a non-belligerent way that gives your students an opportunity to consider that there are other ways to look at this one thing. And that's kind of how I would handle it. I've done that here in this church before. When, I've known, when I teach, I, I still do on occasion. I'll say, you know, there are more, there's more than one way to look at this. You can see it this way or you can see it this way. And then somebody inevitably will say, but where do you stand on that? And then I'll, and I'll say, my particular belief is this fits better. And that's how I teach. But if there are very solid orthodox positions on, uh, you know, that you can take, you know, uh, many times over the years I've said, you can see this in different ways because I don't think those are essential distinctives that are going to denote things that pertain to salvation so much as an understanding of a particular element of theology. And so I'm willing to do that on occasion. If I were working for a, for a, a school that said, you cannot teach this, I, I could, as a teacher, give various ways to look at it without presenting my way of saying, this is the way it really is. And I think there's wisdom in that. So I'd probably do it like that and get fired eventually anyway. <laughs>